Okay, this, this is another variation on the, the theme of looking at complex high-dimensional data by using simultaneous multiple views. Um, what we see here is a scatter plot and then a collection of plots of contingency tables. So you might zoom in on the scatter plot now. What the data consists of is um, 311 villages in England. And th those are what are the locations of those are shown in the scatter plot. And so you might recognize that the shape of the point cloud in the scatter plot isn't a Gaussian distribution, but is rather the outline of England. Um, and then the other plots. Um, the other plots are contingency tables of the pronunciations of certain words. So early in the 20th century, linguists went around to these 311 villages and classified which vowel sounds were used for each of the 311 words. In this plot, we're looking at the word sheath. And what we have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10 different vowel sounds are used in various parts of England for the word sheath. The size of the colored part of the square is proportional to the count that falls in that cell the contingency table. So this particular cell has the largest count. This cell has the next largest count. This one is almost as large. The next plot Um, the plot to the right of the sheath plot shows the word sweat, and one phoneme has a very large count, all the others are much smaller. The same phoneme for sheath has actually quite a small count. Um, and then down below that, in the lower left-hand corner of the window, we see a two-way contingency table of sweat versus, versus sheath. And the largest cell okay. largest cell represents those villages which use the commonest zoom back the commonest vowel sound for sweat along with the most frequent one for sheep. That intersection corresponds to this largest cell here. So again, in this table, the size of the colored square is proportional to those, the number of villages that use that combination of vowel sounds for the two words. Now, of course, we want to be able to see interactions between the contingency tables and the scatter plot. And we do that by using a variation of painting. First, we have to load some color onto the paintbrush. So I set the paintbrush to be green and introduce it into the picture. So one obvious question is, what's the geographical distribution of the commonest set of cells? And so we click on those, and they become green. And immediately, in the scatter plot, those locations, those villages also turn green. Also, in the other two contingency tables, those parts of the corresponding bars in the one-dimensional contingency tables also turn green. Now, what we see here is some, generally, there's a certain geographical coherence here that, that makes sense when you think about regional dialects. See, back in the two-dimensional scatter plot, there's another fairly large cell, so let's make that We'll paint that blue. And again, we see over in the scatter plot sort of geographical co coherence. We can go up in the one-dimensional table. Since this one is mostly blue, why don't we make it all blue? That actually improves the geographical coherence of the scatter plot. We can paint in the scatter plot in the same way that we can paint in the contingency tables. That suggests maybe we should make this cell blue, too. And again, that gives us pretty good, there's sort of a logical geographical coherence to that dialect. Um, and we can Is there any explanation why there are some scattered blue ones and some scattered green ones, which aren't where the main block of blue and green ones are? Well, 
everybody doesn't, there's noise in the data. Uh, okay, I guess the other major thing to see, well, so that, that shows a generalization of the painting paradigm, which you've seen used before, which has been used quite a bit for show in multiple scatter plots. And uh, Werner's done some stuff with using painting between scatter plots and histograms. And the issue this raises is how you can design a system that allows you to improvise using the same very simple idea of painting, which is when you go into a plot, you point in an object and change its color. That whatever sorts of plots you have around on the screen, it's usually pretty obvious what you would want, how you would want them to behave when you paint. And in this system, the reason that we can do scatter plots, histograms, and contingency tables is basically that the graphics is designed using an object-oriented language, and then there's a simple constraint system built on top of the object-oriented language. What the constraint system says is, well, there's an object in our database that represents each village in England. Whenever I paint on a picture, and then there's a constraint which says the, the color of any graphical representation of that village should always be the same as the color of the village. So when I go and paint on a picture, the constraint causes a, what I do actually is change part of the graphical data structure representing this picture. That causes the color of the village object to change, which causes the colors of all the other plots that show representations of that same village to change. Okay. Now the other thing that, that this system does is just also going on, on the theme of discrete data. There's a generalization of rotation and sort of projection pursuit type stuff, which applies to discrete data. If you have tables, the analog of rotating continuous data is to rearrange the rows and columns of a table. And this, this approach to data analysis was very strongly pushed by a French data analyst, Jacques Bertin. When he did this sort of thing, he had to do it by hand with some plastic dominoes, and it would take weeks to re rearrange a table. In this system, because everything is represented on a computer, you can go around rearranging tables, trying to arrange like, like cells next to like cells, and do it very quickly, experiment with a lot of different arrangements of the table. Perhaps it's, although it may be most interesting to do this by hand, we can also do it automatically by invoking an algorithm which tries to rearrange the rows and columns. put at least similarly sized cells next together. It would be nice if it, if it used the color information that we've created as well. Once we've gotten the table rearranged a certain way, that might suggest some more coloring to do. Let's switch to using, using yellow, which may not actually show up on the videotape, but these places, these cells of the table, our automatic algorithm thinks are somehow different from the others. It's probably not visible, but they end up being close to Scotland. So let's go and paint the rest of the ones around Scotland, also yellow. See if that makes any sense in our various Contingency tables, well, it suggests this one might be all yellow. We might make this one all yellow. This one becomes all yellow. 
and well, we can proceed this way indefinitely and eventually discover regional dialects. Okay, that's it.